six four, just one day. That's the good news. Bad news. A lot of different information coming at you. So little by little, listen carefully, and uh, here we go. So look at these instructions. It says, what is the equation of the inverse function? Well, what the heck is that? Well, I'm going to introduce you to this new symbol, f negative 1. See, that looks like a negative 1 power. It's not. That's the symbol for the inverse function. Now, sounds fancy, but hang in there. Try to make it simple. Of f of x equals 5x plus 1. See, this is f of x. And our inverse function is going to be called this. So, how do you get there? Well, first of all, let's start with the given information, which is y equals 5x plus 1. I'm going to give you a visual image of what's going on. So we're going to graph it. So we've done a lot of these. I'm going to try to be really perfect here. My y-intercept is 1. And then I go up 5 from there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, write 1, and play a little connect the dots here. Okay, not perfect. Wish it was better, but it'll do. Now, I'm going to show you guys something else. What if I took a different route, and I said, okay, let's take a couple x's, like 0, and maybe negative 1, and let's just do 1. We'll plug these in and see what kind of values we get for our y. So we plug a 0 in, 5 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. We knew that because of that point. Plug negative 1 in, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, plus 1 is negative 4. So you negative 1, and then if I did my drawing right, 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe this is supposed to be down a little steeper like that. And then I plug a 1 in for x. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. And so that'd be 1. And then that would just take me right to that spot right there, 1, 6. So there it is. Now watch carefully. The inverse function, hope you can read it, uh, it says switch your x's and y's. That's what that said. So if we literally did that to these, I'm going to do this in red. One, zero. So I flip those. Negative four, negative one. Flip them. Six, one. Flip them. I'm going to plot those points. One, zero would be right there. Negative four, negative one would be right about there. And then six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one would be right there. Now, it looks a little wonky, but that's not bad, okay? Actually, that's pretty good. Now, I'm going to, this is the big moment, okay? This is going to have a lot of significance for these other problems that are coming. Remember, we've been doing laws and natural laws and laws and natural laws. I'm just taking a step back from all that craziness just to kind of build the foundation of what we're about to do with these log rhythmic equations. Just give you a simple example. I want you to notice that if I was to draw a line which is y equals x, this equation, remember if we just throw some stuff in there like negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, you would get this line. And I want you to notice something. This right here, if I focus on the original, Right here, remember this we called f of x. What I said was, if we switch the x's and y's, what we're doing is we're actually finding the graph for the inverse. So, graphically speaking, what is the inverse? Well, if you take the purple one, you take this black y equals x line and you actually spin it 180 degrees. This purple part would land right on top of the red part and this purple part would land right on top of that red part. So it's a 
180 degree spin over the line y equals x every time, no matter what the drawing is. So if they gave me this and they said all they wanted me to do was draw the inverse function, I would start by going, okay, well, if this is this. And I know the inverse function has to flip right over this line. I wouldn't have to do any of this. And I'd go, okay, so this is going to take off here. And this is flipped over to that side, so it's like that. All right. Now, they're also going to ask you to actually find the equation that's the inverse. That's not too difficult either if you remember what I just did. I took my x's and y's and I flipped them. So that means you're literally going to take this equation, remember, which is actually y equals 5x plus 1. You're literally going to, and it's a step 1, step 2, step 3 sort of thing. So number 1, you're going to switch your x's and your y's. All right, let's do it. x equals 5y plus 1. So what is that? Well, now you're going to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 1, subtract 1. I'm going to flip this around and get 5y equals x minus 1. And now to get rid of that 5, I can divide by 5, but I'm going to actually multiply by 1 fifth. So this times this would be y, this times this would be 1 fifth x, this times this would be negative 1 Fifth. Now, here's the thing. Because I switched the x's and the y's, it's no longer f of x. It's now the inverse function. So I need to replace last step uh, y with the appropriate symbol, which is this. All that means is you switch the x's and the y's and you solve for y again. So I'm going to take that out and replace it with this. Now let's take a good magnifying glass and take a look at this. If I was to graph this, remember, this is my line set. My drawing's not perfect. But that means that little red line is right about negative one fifth or negative point two, which looks pretty accurate. And then to find the other point, I go up one, right five. So I go up one, over five, one, two, three, four, five. Now, my drawing's not perfect, but you see, it's pretty good. So there's a lot going on. Just remember these steps if you get confused. Also, bury this in your head that the function and the inverse function are going to be 180 spins over y equals x. It's just something that happens. Okay, keep that in mind. Oh, I forgot to mention this. A few lessons back, we the book uh, defined this as the inverse of the exponential function, exponential equation, and vice versa. Don't get that language confused with finding the inverse of functions. These are two different worlds. All I want you to do is think, this is an exponential equation, this is a logarithmic equation saying the same thing, okay? Just kind of let go of the word inverse of each other, let go of that. Um, but I really want you to understand this is the true meaning of finding the inverse of a function. Different worlds. All right, next chunk. This is going to be a big pre-lesson, you guys. So, here's the thing. You guys should be somewhat familiar, generally, with all these parent functions. Remember, y equals x looks like that. y equals x squared looks like that. Square root of x looks like that. That's the value looks like that. This, remember, this is recent, but this is exponential growth. So that would be like that. But it could also be decay. So it would be more like that. This is probably new to you, but it's something 
we did in the toolbox. Cubic root of x, we haven't seen that in a while, but it kind of looks like that. Now, I'm not going to explain all of this. The reason I'm talking about this, number one, is for review. Number two, when we start graphing these, you're going to have like a, a memory of what they look like. Okay, that's the goal. But what I'm going to do is show you the why behind it. So here we go. That's why it's called the free lesson. Once you kind of get it, then you can take the shortcut. That's my goal here. So interesting, I got a two there. Remember my big lecture the other day, logarithm or calculators and decimals is all base 10 numbers. So if you type this in, you have a hard time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is kind of open up the uh, hood and take a look. So if I'm like, well, if I don't know how to graph stuff, I'm just going to grab some X's, plug them in, figure out what Y is. The problem is, if I put a number in there for X, and I go log, like let's say 2, uh, your calculator is in inserting base 10. It's a whole different problem. So I can't even use my calculator. So it's like, hmm, that's most I can't use. This I can't use. So what can I use? Now, you're not going to have to do this. But I'm going to show you. This is equal to y. And I'm going to use my rules. 2 to the power of y equals x. Now, if you want to look at it differently, this is what you're used to. So, start here, go there, go there. So, this tells us 2 to the y power equals x. So, guess what? This is very unique and rare. So, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And if I plug these in, look, I'm going to, I'm going to plug y in first, and that will allow me to find x. It's a little different approach. So, 2 squared is 4. 2 to the first power is 2, 2 to the 0 power is 1. If I put a negative 1 in there, I get 2 to the negative 1, which is the same thing as 1 half, which is 0.5. If I put a negative 2 in there, let's make that a 2. That's 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth, which is 0.25. You can kind of see a little pattern there. And if I was to graph it now, it would look Right, let's start with 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 1, 1, 0, and then it gets 0.5 down 1, and then it gets 0.25 down 2, and now what I'm trying to say to you is, this is what that looks like. Now take my word for it, I'm not going to bore you, but if this is a 3, these numbers are going to be different, but very similar. If this is a 4, these numbers are going to be different, but very similar. So we're going to say, hey, try to lock this into your memory, okay? So, if they ask us, let me make sure it's this one they, they're going to ask us. Okay, I've done a little work, so I don't waste your time. But what I'm doing is I'm now finding this is the inverse function. So if this is actually f of x, I'm trying to graph the inverse function. So notice I took all of these x's and y's, flipped them. I've already plotted them, and I can see, whoa, come in like that. Now, did I really have to do this? Not if you know the shortcut, and that is, if I just drew in y equals x, and I flip the purple one 180 degrees over the black y equals x, it would land right there. So there's a little trick for you. But now it's going to get really mathy, mathy. So I'm running out of time. Here's one thing I forgot to say. So remember that this purple one right here was this. So it's your generic parent function of log graph. So we'll lock this one in. I think I might have said that. Anyways, so now we know what the other one looks like. I'm going to click here probably. Looks like that kind of sort of. So now they're going to ask us to actually find the equation of the inverse function. It's going to have to start with part two. So make sure you go right to part two pre-lesson.